All right. <clears throat> what day is it? Monday. February 25th, one thirty in the afternoon. I'm all set to do a painting. Uh, go to the top view. So I got 18 by 24. You know what? It's not super tight. So this is just light coming from the window. I can't block this. <clears throat> can't block it. Well, I could. Do I care? Yeah, I kind of care. I just noticed this now. How can I... Put one of these easels maybe over here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, that's done. Just put an easel, blocks of light, ready, good to go. So, here's what I'm thinking I'm thinking of most of the sky dark. Like, okay, so there's a little bit of some sort of horizon, and I'll try to, I'll, I won't do just, just a straight line. Maybe I'll do like, I was kind of thinking, is this a cypress tree? Or, I don't know, maybe one little lonely tree tree in a silhouette and a dark background but imagine if there's just this like distance of light and the rest of it is going to be just very dark and maybe dark blue all the way up and maybe i'll try something else with the underwash too maybe i'll try uh like like a, a yellow orange I, I have no idea what it's going to do but let's just try that let's See what the happens. Man, you're always making me dance, John. <clears throat> oh, I couldn't find your comment before, John, about stay professional, dude. I was just I was just venting, talking shit. I, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't actually I think you're referring to the fact that I was like just thinking about saying some ridiculously silly things in the application. <clears throat> I think that's what you're referring to. But anyway, yeah, yeah, for sure. I know. Actually, my way is, see, in my head, I'll say things like that, but I'm always, in real life, I'm, I'm pretty diplomatic. <laughs> I'm always pretty, you know, I'm not the kind of, I don't like, uh, it's not that I don't, I'm not afraid of conflict, I just don't like rocking the boat. I just don't like uh, upsetting people. So, just because I've learned from experience, what does what good does it do? You just You might just upset somebody. Just because you're probably just immature. I mean, you, I mean, one. I was just being immature and, you know. So I was just being a little silly. But these are normally my internal thoughts, right? I don't usually... Oh, hey, Cheryl. Yeah, I don't usually, like, my entire life, I've never done anything like this, which is to... Oh, you son of a gun. Look at that. Shit balls. Look how much of a... Of a like looseness there is on this. I thought I'd, I'd tighten it up so hot, tight. Okay, I'll I'll do a wire trick on it later. <clears throat> Anyhow, yeah. This still doesn't feel real. The fact that like, like we're communicating digitally, you know? Like, that's kind of a cool thought. Like right now, there's six people watching this thing. And I have no idea who they are. Leah Rizor. That's a cool last name, Leah. Leah Rizor. Hey, Leah, are you the one who came up with the name Skyporn? Someone had come up with a one of the I, I said you know I asked people what do you think I should name a painting and this one person said sky porn as the name of the painting I was like nah man I'm gonna use that for the whole series <clears throat> but I couldn't find where she posted her comment so I don't know who did it Leah was that you who came up with the name sky porn because I was trying to find the person to give them credit for for calling it that isn't it crazy so the problem here is this live stream is there's a delay like about seven seconds so like I'll say something and then maybe you'll reply back <clears throat> but I won't I won't like notice your reply to like 10 15 seconds okay or 
I don't know what's going on now. Okay, so where should I put this brush? I'll put you over here. Okay, now got nice. I don't know where this came from. I'm really good at getting messy quickly. Okay, you know, what? I'm just gonna wash my hands. Hold on a sec. Why did you have blue paint on? I don't know. I think maybe I just move it. I have all, all these paints over here. So, I don't know. I, re I was reading, I was on Reddit, and uh, it was one of these uh, threads where the topic was what are some products, what are some brand products that actually really worked? And one of them was palm olive, I think it's palm olive, dish soap for washing water-based oil paints or something along those lines. Rishore, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I give it a try. And now I, like, I, uh, I use palm olive oil to wash my dishes and to clean off the paint. Now, of course, it only works with water-based paint. <laughs> well, yeah, this, well, this this color is not going to last. I was actually thinking I'd do it more orange or yellow, and look at the it really came out orange. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I need to draw my idea down. That's not the blue I want. I want a darker blue. Let's see what this one is. Okay, that's a good one. All right, so check it out. Buenos tardes, Norma. Buenos tardes. I think it means like good day in Spanish. I think. Okay, so here's what I was thinking. All right, like just imagine like the whole sky is gonna be clouds, and there'll be like a little bit of this land here. Maybe that's where my little tree is. I don't know, or maybe not. But imagine all up here is going to be just like <clears throat> heavy clouds. So this is going to be, this orange is all going to be gone. It's going to be dark. Maybe I'll put blacks and browns here. Because i, I got to get off the, I'm doing too many primary bright colors. And, you know, there's a time and a place for it. But I kind of feel like I need to muddy things up a bit. Okay. I'm very happy right now because right now my ringing is is like a five. It's just kind of like, imagine the TV's too loud. That's what it's like. There's someone's there's a TV right here and it's on the static channel. And it's just going. So a five I can live with, man. I can totally live with it. Whew. Just don't want it to turn up because it's, it's a good day so far. Okay, yeah. So what I'm thinking about. Now just the shape of the clouds, like they're gonna start off like you know, like this, and then we're, they're gonna flow some way. Do I do I make them like I want to make them kind of feel heavy and oppressive? Like this this whole thing is like pushing down, and I think I'm gonna make yeah the, the light more of a sliver. So it's gonna be just just this little area is gonna be lit up, but it'll be lit up really intensely, and maybe I'll do like light intense on the bottom of this, but the clouds are all going to be deep. So here's where that blue is going to go. Okay. Yeah, we had, uh, for anyone who's living in Toronto, should have seen that the wind has been crazy today. Like it also started snowing in again. <laughs> No, it's more like a oh, heaviness pushing down, like a darkness. I was, oh yeah, really sucks that it has that 
The only way I really could fix it is if I pulled these staples off and restretched it. But I, there's a tool for stretching that I, I don't know if I know how to have it anymore. It like grips the, the canvas and you can pull it. I used to stretch canvases a long time ago. Now I just I'm just too impatient and I need a good workshop to, to build canvases. I made really good quality ones. Of course, when you build it yourself, you can control it. Now it's like they're just probably cost like the materials. Nah, I'd save a little bit of money, but it's the time. It takes me hours and hours to do it. And the thing that I actually hate doing is gessoing. Freaking hate gessoing. You gotta sit there and wait for because I always have to do like like minimum three coats. Gessoing is is a white kind of paint that sticks to the canvas, the raw canvas, and it creates a, a nice painting surface. It like uh, allows the um, paint to absorb nicely, and and you can also set different types of textures on it. Like you can actually. After you do it, you can sand it down if you want it very smooth, or you can leave the brush strokes still bumpy. Okay, I love this. I love that you're sharing this, everyone. Thank you. I'm excited to watch more later. Yeah, cool. You have inspired me to start painting again. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I never really thought about that. I just started doing this because I felt like I was thinking, how do I switch from being completely super isolated for 20, 25 years? Because I don't like to be around a lot of people. Of course, no one will ever know that I've been doing stuff for 20, 30 years. And it really kind of came down to I needed to do this because it really makes me uncomfortable. And it was kind of based on a, I'm pretty sure it was David Bowie who said, if you're comfortable, something about creativity and being too comfortable. Like you're, you have to live on the edge of, of, uh, Something, something, blah, blah, blah. So anyhow, that's why I'm doing this. I am definitely constantly think about not about not doing this. Like last night, I almost said, fuck it, I'm not going to do this filming thing. And I'm just going to jump on that big painting up there. And uh, But something's compelling where I feel like I need to do this. Like this is my only, I don't even want to call it marketing because I am not a salesperson. I can't, I, I it's like, I can't deal with like selling stuff. I can only create. I can't sell stuff. So I figured maybe maybe eventually one day some people will see this and they'll they'll say fuck it, let's let's do a show and they can organize it. Cuz that's kind of how it happened to me before. I had a really successful show in October of 2017. I partnered up with a charity. It was actually the chairman of the charity who suggested it. And then he had three people who were like project matters, they organized everything. They even had people who were taking care of the purchases and the selling. I just showed up and it was awesome. And I sold something. I can't remember how many paintings I sold. In like three hours, like 11 paintings. And I donated, I think I sold like about 20, 21,000 bucks worth of paintings. And I donated 30%, 30%, so like six grand or so to the charity. So it was like, it was awesome because I'd be happy. Like it was a really fucking good charity. I wish I could do that again where you could give back to like a really good charity and and still do it so so i just you know i thought a lot about doing shows but i just don't have the energy like it just sucks the energy just to even think about it so i'm going to uh just keep on working on the online space and i just updated my website yesterday it actually looks better it's easier to navigate it's faster um i still have about a hundred videos i have to like enable that I, I'm behind in that, but I'm making it so when you go to my website, you can click on each picture and it shows a full size, or you can click on the title and it takes you a page of a high res version and all the videos of me making it. I don't know if anyone will ever fucking care, but that's what I was doing. And I think it's going to pay off one day. One day it'll pay off. Hopefully before I go bankrupt and lose my house. That's, that's sort of my plan. I'm really hoping... I can make a career of this before I have to lose my house because <laughs> it's getting close. <laughs> it's getting close and scary. I love this house. 
it's actually just the main reason is I just want to have a, a stable environment for my son. That's that's the main thing. I could live on the fucking streets. That wouldn't I could handle that. But I have responsibilities. Not just for me. Not just for me. Okay, so. Alright, so let's do this darkness down here. <laughs> darkness. My cat, I didn't talk to my cat, was telling me yesterday how he, one of his clients decided to retire from his career and paint. It just so happens he's a multi gazillionaire because he was a dentist. And so he's like, see, that's how you're supposed to do it, Josh. You make your money, then you start being an artist. You don't just start being an artist. Because you're fucking gonna, <laughs> you're gonna lose everything. <sighs> but I kind of have no choice. I have to do this. I have to p paint because it keeps me sane. Because of this fucking brain tumor thing I got. It is so powerfully distracting that I have. It's hard to do other work. And painting calms me down. And brings me back to life. So I, I feel like uh, this is like do or die. Everything's riding on this. I just can't think negatively. You know what I mean? I can't think negatively. Which is kind of why I was so bummed about not getting into these exhibits. And being just so bummed when I look at the stuff that was accepted. I'm thinking like, really, is my stuff that bad? Because I'm not, I don't, I don't, like I do not care about theme or any of that shit. I just want to start getting it out there a little bit so i have a couple days to apply to another i'll take it i'll take it another chance this year for the toronto outdoor art exhibit and we shall see if they think my stuff is worthy are you worthy You are not worthy. So says we. Okay, so I think I can't, yeah, don't want to do two happy colors. So I think do I I can do I wanna Yeah, I was kinda of thinking of like doing like a really intense like kinda like maybe it'll open up a tiny bit over there. Yeah. The art world's such a funny world. I have never been a fan of talking about art. I've never been a fan of like I, I'm. I like. I believe artists and sports, you know, athletes should shut the fuck up and just do their stuff. And pe if people like watching it, that's the only experience. It's like you ever watch. I don't watch a lot of sports, but always after the big game, they always go up and they you know talk to the quarterback or the captain of the hockey, hockey team, and it's literally the same thing. Oh, we we went up there, we we did our best, but the you know their defense is really good this this uh, this game, and but we you know we're, we gave we want to give our hundred ten percent, and we're going to keep pushing throughout the season, and it's like fuck. And what's worse is when you hear some like pompous artists talking about their stuff. Like, I just, I can't do it. It makes me laugh. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. You know? When people, like, they make it sound like it's much more than it actually is. I think you should just shut the hell up. And if your stuff is good, it'll it'll do the talking for you. <laughs> I can't. I've tried to listen to this. I'm like, or what's worse is other people, like the curator is talking about, you know, talking about the, like, okay, Mark Rothko. It stuff is kind of neat because psychologically, big colors has an impact on us. This is my theory for Mark Rothko, why people like it. It has a big impact. And it was pretty bold to do something so big and simple back then. But to go on and like wax poetic about it, same with like Jackson Pollock, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Like, who are you kidding? It's all about money laundering at that stage. <laughs> You know, it's convincing rich people that they should they should, they should need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, because guess what? Those people make money off of it. That's just my my theory. So I think that people can always make fun of me. You can always like 
say what you're doing is bullshit. Cause, yeah, it is. I'm just slapping some colors around. <laughs> Nothing that special about it. It's just, yeah. There are very few artists I really, really like and respect. I've watched, I'm looking at so many modern artists and the stuff is all the same. It's all about just taking a photograph and then fucking with it a little bit. And I just, it's like, man, don't you know that we can tell? And you know, one of the things you can always tell with photographs, especially if, if look at the lighting, the lighting always gives it away. Any sh sh foreshortened dark shadows that are strong, Say you use a bright light like a flash or something, and it just looks lifeless. You know what I mean? Lifeless. So my my thoughts are to try to do as much from your imagination or from real life as you can. That it's just so much more authentic, I find. Now I've painted from photographs before for sure. I try not to, or I try altering it, or I take ideas from it. What I'm talking about the people like that's their main process. Their main process is take a photograph and then just paint it. I want to see more of the person behind it into it. That presses me more. Am I talking garbage? Yes, I am. Ignore this. It's literally silly talk. Okay, wait a second. Now, is this going to be yellow coming through? Let me just... Okay, what? Well, this needs to be heavier. What I really want is something a lot heavier. Okay, let's take some browns. Here we go. What's this? Burn umber. Yeah, baby. Hello, burn umber. I think I want to start doing is not using paintbrushes so much. I was literally thinking about getting a carrot and painting with a carrot. I don't know why, just to see if it had a different effect. This was like in the middle of the night, my half asleep. Painting with a carrot made complete sense to me. You know when you have like, you're kind of half awake and you have this idea and you're like, yeah, that's a great idea. And you wake up and go, fuck, I'm going to paint with a carrot. Okay. It's not such a, not such a, an amazing thought after all. <laughs> Fucking paint with a carrot. I did discover there's an artist. This guy is kind of innovative. Adrian Gehi or something like this. And he does some very distinctive work. That's what I like about it. And I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even use paintbrushes. And it kind of got me thinking that, you know what? Maybe I should give that a try. Maybe I should not do any paintbrushes. And and because I'm always trying this is like this is like a painting. Like this is, this stuff has been done thousands and thousands of times. Um, I'm just doing it because it's comfortable and you know, I know, I know it. But I might give it a try. And what he often does is he probably gets like a some sort of spatula and streaks across and creates like patterns. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. I have some music queued up. So let me open a new tab browser, a new browser. I have to pull this here. Hey, okay. Oh, I have to show you my screen. Hold on a second. My screen is, yeah, there it is. Okay. There's my screen. A D R I E N G H G I E. No. Hopefully it'll do a. There it is. Adrian G. Is that the guy? I spelled it wrong. Uh, artist. Please correct it. Ah, damn! It's on my. I know. I always get like this. Where I can't. I can't give it up. I have to find out. I might have a little... Okay, it's in my Instagram. I'm just following a couple of people. And he's one of them. I'm following his hashtag. So I can see... Get out of here, you crap. Okay. Three hashtags I'm following. There it is. A-D-R-I-A-N. I... A-D-R-I-A-N... G H E N I E. I don't know how to pronounce his name. 
There he is. Okay, so check this stuff out. He did something that I actually really liked, and I this is something I I would have done. Look at this. This is fucking awesome. Um, how do I make it full screen? Is it this one? Where's the big pictures? Yeah, let me. How do you go view more? Okay, view more. This he took. This is it's actually very nicely done. He took Van Gogh's. Can I get a bigger picture, please? How do you make it bigger? Click this. Uh, you can hardly see it. It's called The Sunflowers 1937. He did it, so he's from Romania. He basically took Van Gogh's, um, you know, sunflowers, and he exploded it, and it's beautiful. And when I look at my stuff, I go, oh, my stuff is just a fucking amateur again. And, and, and I go, yeah, this is this is a good painter, this guy, Adrian Gehi, whatever. And he, let me show you, like, what other stuff he does. Is this a good, yeah, here's a good size resolution. Um See, this is way more free flowing, and I I feel like I've been, oh, get lost. I've been too constrained right now. I'm I am on this kind of kick to do these kind of paintings, and it's not gonna last forever. And I'm gonna evolve and change, but I kind of like this guy. So here's two artists that I'm I'm actually digging: Adrian Gehin, whatever, and the other guy is Peter Doig. And he lived in Canada too, and he actually lived not far from me, I think, but he's now in South America. Peter Doig, D O I G, and I just discovered these guys just randomly like looking for stuff. <sighs> He's done some cool ass things. Like where's the one that I was, I was looking at one where he did a painting in Rosedale. Oh shit, my tennis just kicked in super loud. I think it's this one of these ones. Rosedale's like a a, a rich neighborhood that's not far from from uh, like it's like about a five ten minute drive from me. Anyhow, check out Peter Doi. So when I look at these two artists, I'm thinking, okay, I'm being I'm being too conservative. I'm too, being too stuck in. So I feel like I'm gonna break free soon. That's that's kind of what I feel like. Okay, I'm just rambling. Okay, I'll go back to here. So let's go back to this. Yeah, see, this is just this is just whatever, isn't it? Okay. All right. Well, let's just let's just do this. Quit your quit your yapping, Josh. Quit your yapping. I do you like thickness? And okay, so I know. So my problem is because I'm using a paintbrush, it's just gonna look like lots of other paintings. I got to start experimenting. I got to start. I really need a studio. I just can't afford to get a studio. But if I had a studio, I would have a whole bunch of paintings set up. I'd work on about, honestly, 10 different paintings at the same time. I'd get freaking messy. It'd be awesome because I have my dog there with me. And I would start doing some crazy shit. But I can't do that here because this is like my living room. And I can't, you know, I can only get it so dirty. I don't have a place to eat. <laughs> this is actually my dining room table. So... I don't have a, I haven't eaten at a table in, I don't know, a year? One day it's going to happen. I'll tell you the story where it almost happened. When I was 17, I was known as the, the artist for my school. And this guy named Alan Detweiler was... A former student at my school and he was apparently some sort of like a, I wouldn't say royalty but he was sort of tap he was some sort of like aristocrat yeah that's what it was like he was like an aristocrat from England and he would he was a patron of the arts ta -ta -ta. so he'd go around and he would fund competitions he would try to find artists and help them in their careers anyhow he saw some of my stuff I was doing and he made me an offer this is before my last year of high school he said, I think you are a potential great master. Those were his words. I am willing to have you go to live in my castle in England. You don't have to do anything. I'll take care of all the food. It's for free. You can stay as long as you want. All you have to do is paint. And I wouldn't have to give him any of the artwork. This was his offer. Alan Detweiler. And I was 17 at the time, and it kind of freaked me out. I was like, 
what? Like, I, I'm, I want to go to university. I want to go and get drunk with my friends. Like, you know, live in a castle in England? Like, that was kind of creepy, actually. But I always made the offer. He didn't, he, he, apparently he only made that offer like once or twice in like in all 30 years or 40 years or something. Oh, and I, he wrote me a note. I still have that somewhere. What it, it said something like, you are one of the great ones. It was kind of like, you know, it was, felt good to have someone say that to you. He said, you were one of the great ones, like, of the century. Like, it was fucking a little, a little bit, <laughs> yeah, a little, kind of left field. You know, I always knew I was pretty good, but I didn't, like, that was kind of fucking weird. I got to find that letter. I'm sure it's upstairs in my piles of stuff. But that's kind of cool. So if I imagine if I, what my life would have been differently if I, because he, you know, he's part of those, those fucking, excuse my friends, like, you know, he was, like, you know, would hang out with the Duke, what's the name, is Duke of Edinburgh, like, he would hang out with the Duke of Edinburgh, what else would he hang out with, like, that kind of stuff, you know, and to be honest, that's how it really happens for artists, there are so many talented artists, there are thousands of more talented artists than me out there in the world, and it's mostly about the connections, right? It's mostly about some people are going to want to make money off of you, so they're going to make you important, right? That's that art scene. That's the influence of the art scene. But, uh, yeah, that's my little story. They lost the painting, too. My painting was hanging up in the halls of my high school for all these years. It was on the second floor and it was, the theme was David and Goliath and I had a pit I had my dad, my brother and my friend Andrew Tepperman be the models. So I took them in different poses and what happened was I made the, the painting of my dad, which who was the who was the antagonist, who was like the he was the it was like environment versus corporate kind of thing. It was this forest fire in the background and my dad was the bad guy sneering down at you. And the problem was I made him too too realistic. He looked so much like my dad that I don't want people to think that I had some sort of weird, you know, angry relationship with my father. Well, even though that's true, I didn't want to I didn't I still respect him and I don't want him to, didn't want him to feel bad. So I ended up having to change the, the painting. But I wanted to take a photograph of it for my website, so I called them up and it turns out they had done all these renovations and knows knows where the painting went. Which is a shame because I was pretty proud of that painting. It was pretty big. Pew. Dave and Goliath. Hmm. What are we gonna do? Let's take, that's a very dark blue. Oh, let's see what's cerulean blue. Be, maybe be kind of nice. Okay, I got an idea. Where's that white? What if there was almost like cracks of light, excuse me, coming through? I think that might be kind of nice. So I need some white for that. Here, I'll just mix here. What I'm kind of talking about is imagine if there's like, I'm addicted now to having a computer screen in front of my paint. It is, it gives me a new perspective because I, when I'm looking at this, I'm looking down at an angle and there's a lot of light shining everywhere. But when I see it on the screen, it's nice and flat. And I guess the, the light from here is a little bit different than, than, than here. Okay, oh yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking cool. Maybe I shouldn't put so many yells up here. Where's the light? Here we go. Alan Detweiler. Let's find out whatever happened to Alan Detweiler. I'm just curious. Let me go back here for a sec. Just bear with me. Desktop. Alan. I'm pretty sure that was his name. Alan. A L E N D E I B T W E I L E R. I think. That's how you spell it, Alan Detweiler. 
Wikipedia. Let's see. He was a Canadian composer, author, and patron of the arts. He was born in Toronto. Okay, yeah. Attended conservative music. He obtained a degree in philosophy, U of T, Trinity College, Dublin. Earned a PhD. Blah 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 blah. Oh, his major works: David and Goliath. What, what year is that? Nineteen sixty-nine. Okay, is that fucking crazy? The theme of the competition that he funded was David and Goliath. That's crazy. So he actually composed a work called David and Goliath. That is interesting. Yeah, see, look at this. Alan Detweiler created and administrated the annual Detweiler Competition, which awarded prizes for the Visual Arts Upper Canada College in Toronto and Bedford School in England. That's what I, there was. Okay. Oh, he died. 2012. Huh. Isn't that interesting? I still remember that dude. He was kind of a, like a eccentric, very eccentric kind of guy. He had gray kind of wispy kind of gray hair and he had that very upper class british accent <sighs> what a oh, what a crazy world am i back on here yet alan detweiler hello my name is alan detweiler would you like to live in my castle <laughs> for fuck's sake Come live in my castle. I'm totally not a pedophile. Well, I was in 17, so he's not. I better not say that. That's not true. I have no idea. <laughs> like, you know, apparently he was a patron of the arts. Like, that's what he would do. He would go around supporting artists. So I can't, yeah. I, I was, There was nothing but positive vibes from the guy. Like, he was very, you know, what I remember. There was nothing weird about him. Like, that way. Because, <laughs> yeah. So you just erase that from your memories that I sent. <laughs> totally not a pedophile. Because he was not a pedophile, as far as I know. Although there were a couple of pedophiles in my schools. I got some friends of mine, fuckers. Not a douchebag. Two pedophiles in my school. My in my homeroom was the was the one that got where the main pedophile was was attacking me and my well not me but most of my friends there's a couple guys and i tell you there's one guy i will never say his name but he definitely got molested by this former teacher of mine and he was like one of these guys who was like very good guy you he seemed like the all american canadian kind of guy he was destined for for harvard and then like you know fucking banker on wall street just like destined for some maybe that's not the best direction like maybe that's not such a, but some sort of like a high powerful career and i could just see what happened over the years it just it it had totally he was changed he was no longer he was like angry and bitter and i don't d blame him and we were just young naive guys i'll tell you he was and actually the the that pedophile teacher was one of my favorite teachers ever the irony of the whole thing because he would be at our level. Like, first of all, I went from a public school to this private school. And in grade, I went to grade 7. With my, and I was, like, stunned by how different it was. Like, in public school, no one paid attention to me. I did not know my times table in grade 7 because they didn't. you could just not do it. And then when I got to this high school, man, they were very on top of you. Um, but anyhow, when my first day in school in my homeroom... My home teacher, who was the pedophile guy, <laughs> he walks in, says, everyone sit down, and he says, okay, just sit there. And he puts on Pink Floyd the wall. We don't need no education. And I was like, wow, my mind is blowing. <laughs> Definitely got our attention. We were like, what is going on? You know, like, <laughs> and he used to have us do these spelling competitions that were so much fun. He would, it was called, I think it was called boogers or something. But anyhow, he'd give us, you know, we'd have to learn a certain vocabulary. Then he'd line up the class and put, and there's a big chalkboard on the wall. He'd draw a line right down the middle and there'd be a nose on it. And you would be, you would, everyone would have line up and you have chalk in your hand. And he would say the word and you had to spell it. Whoever spelt it first won and there was a booger goes in the guy's nose. So was, there was this ridiculous game of, you know, your, I don't know how old you are in grade seven, but your boys, all boys, and we don't want to get a booger. 
So we're actually studying really quickly, like, how do you spell this word? Or, was, or maybe also you had to give a definition. It was like one of those things where, you know, you had to give the root form of the Latin conjugation or some shit, right? And uh, it was actually fun because it was like you were a cowboy at a draw with your chalk in your hand. <laughs> what else did he do? Oh, yeah, we had to. So if you ever screwed up, misbehaved, his punishment was brilliant. You had to write, or you had to write something called a walrus. And a walrus was a, was a story about with a, a walrus was a theme, and depending on how how bad your transgression was would be how many words. So you'd say a thousand word walrus by tomorrow, and so like everyone had to come up with some sort of creative way of talking about a walrus. So he was a good teacher from that perspective until he started showing up at our parties in grade eight with alcohol. <laughs> That's when I kind of figured something doesn't seem right. Like I'm barely, like you know, kind of trying to work my way through my friends who are like you know, there's alcohol and you're like, do we drink this? Do we don't drink this? And here's this guy shows up with alcohol for everybody. Uh, the other guy was a swim teacher in the prep. Yes, yeah. So this one, I definitely don't want to say his name because it was actually my ex-wife is friends with the guy's daughter. And I remember very clearly we had to, if you forgot your bathing suits, you had to go in the pool naked. And there's a bunch of times where I forgot it and I was like embarrassed as hell. So whatever age grade seven is, yep, this guy was a pedo. And he used to watch us when we were taking showers, of course, to supervise us. Oh man. It's weird because you couldn't talk about it. You weren't, you couldn't really say anything, and you wouldn't. Who you're supposed to say something to? Like you know, you didn't want to be a chicken or whatever, and and also too, you're half the time you're even clued out. You're like that's that, that weird age where you're not embarrassed, but you're kind of embarrassed. Like half the guys like haven't reached puberty, so you're just like everyone's sort of like you know trying to mind their own business anyhow. And then you got this older guy who's your swim coach. You know, guys, you know, stop talking. Get you know, put the soap on you. You know, make sure you wash your hair. Whatever it was, like you know, I, 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 this is all after the fact that when I think about it in retrospect, that that is, that's a little, that's kind of messed up. But uh, at the time, I was just dreading the swimming because of the showers, and also <laughs> forgetting to wear a swimsuit, which was really weird. Being naked in a pool. God, I hope that's just a an incorrect memory I have, but I seem to recall that having to go naked in the pool, or maybe it was just a threat. I mean, it was a long time ago, but uh, yeah, things are, I, I would imagine, far better now because obviously there were some major ramifications that happened after that. So hopefully. No kids will have to experience it. Well, it also happened in, in a public school. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but so my, a couple of my very best friends, and of course, I won't say their names. One guy actually, yeah, it was this was um, at Oakwood Collegiate and, and Winona, the music teacher, was it Mr. Barnes? I, better, I don't know, I can't remember his name, but he was like for sure busted. He used to take the guys up to his cottage and they had a plane that he would fly them around in and some of my friends woke up like they were basically drugged and they didn't have pants on. And so, and I've never, never talked to one of my old friends, good friends, who we all are pretty sure was like uh, molested by this guy. And I think he went to jail. So if you Googled Winona or Oakwood pedophile music teacher, that's, that was, that was my friends. I'm like, I don't know. I, I just must've lucked out and, and was never a, uh, but it could have been me easily. Like I would have totally loved to go into a cottage where get to like fly in a, a little seaplane thing. Like that was awesome. But I didn't. I'd actually. I was supposed to go to Oakwood. It went on Oakwood, but instead I went to. Uh, I went to a different school. So most of my friends from young were all at Oakwood, and that was my group. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to. It's not really working out very well. I was trying to make like as if light is coming through these clouds, but they're not really taking shape yet. They're not really forming something. It's almost like, I don't know, not quite there.
See, I can't even see what's happening up here because the light is too, the, sh the shine is too strong on my, off of the screen, I guess. So I can kind of see what's going on over here. Let's do some, let's do some light color, the cerulean blue, some white, cerulean blue with white, what is that going to look like, hmm, it's okay, maybe I can just use it for some layers, like, change the hue of it. This is a soundtrack to Battlefield 1942. One of the first ones. It's freaking wicked. Dun 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 dun. See, I'm in a zone right now. It's kind of nice. This, I just sort of disappear. Like I, I, I'm no longer here. It's a very nice feeling. Everything just fades away. Dun 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 I want to take a break. I don't want. I'm not finished. There's still like a. There's still this. This whole sky up at the top and the bottom even. Excuse me. I still don't. Uh, don't really have nailed down yet. Can't quite see the stupid shine. Well, maybe not that. Maybe there's a light brown. Is there a light brown? What color? Um, oh, wait, what's this? 
That's yellow. I had a... Oh, it's a dark brown. I know what I'll do. I'll take... Is this brown? Yes, this is a nice brown. I like this brown. Let's take some of this brown. Because it's kind of like a warm... It warms things up a bit, which is kind of strange to think about a brown. But it's just something I was playing with recently and seems to, uh, where'd it go? Here, is this it? No, here you are. Let's try, oops, let's try, what kind of, what will it look like? Oh my God, this is a purple. Huh? Maybe this is a different color I just grabbed. I want the brown. Where did I put it? The brown. We'll take that bit of white, mix it in. See what it turns into. Just a little bit lighter. Just a little bit lighter. Yeah. And I need a little bit lighter brown. Just to touch scoop why don't okay uh okay let's try to make some brown with this ah, shit this thing what is this this is like a tan so mix the tan with the brown I think what I want, what I need, want to do is, is bring in some. Yeah, I don't like that. It's not very nice. It's not helping me a lot. Where's the white? Hmm, I kind of was thinking more like cool blue, but I'm just doing this right now. Okay, I'm not quite sure what this is. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that is. Okay, I think I gotta, I think I should step back and then let this one settle down for a little while. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna take a break for a little bit. It's not doing the effect I was hoping for, because I think what I did differently was, I, I did straight lines across here, and I was thinking more like, <sighs> okay, yeah, let's just, let's just leave it, and come back to it later, and. Hmm. Need some of this.
Okay, well, let's just uh, stop there. Let's stop there. Probably it might be too dark. I don't know if the colors are showing through. Anyhow, okay, yeah, I'm gonna stop right here. How long has it been? Almost an hour, five, 57 minutes. Okay, that's, that's good. All right, thanks for watching, listening to my stupid rambling. Just blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Definitely the problem right now, I'm gonna have to come back to it. Maybe, okay, I like this idea of like streaks, the sky melting up here. That's cool. That's cool. I like you. Good job, Josh. Good job on that. But what's not cool right now is the uh, this. I want to make it darker, more intense along the, like the streak. Yeah. I was hoping to build some shapes up here, but that's not happening. Okay, so I, I was really wanting there to be like a, like a, a more like a narrow kind of like bursting out. Just leave it there. No, I can't leave it there. Okay, now I'm gonna leave it there. All right, I'll see you.